stop a while and listen to my story. I've just come down from the hills. I went there to find my childhood sweetheart midst the roses and the whippoorwills. I returned to look for the old pine tree that haunted my memory so. It was there she said she'd be waiting for me when we carved our hearts long ago. But the old pine tree is gone. Still my love for her lingers on. They cut down the old pine tree and they hauled it away to the mill. Nice and clean. He, he, he knocked a couple feet off the end for us. This is going to be her spot. Right there. In front of my home for the next month or two or three. <laughs> Oh, that's hard. Oh. Hi there, my name is Tom Alpel, and I have long dreamed of carving a dugout canoe and paddling it down the river. And uh, this year I had the amazing opportunity to do that, working with Churchill Clark, the great, 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 great grandson of Captain William Clark of the Lewis and Clark Expedition. Farwood. I intended to carve a, a canoe out of a cottonwood tree, however the one I had picked out was just a little bit too small. So instead I bought this great big old Douglas fir tree from a sawmill and had it hauled out to camp. Which is great, except that the wood is really hard and really full of knots. There it is. That's why we love the chainsaw. <laughs> And Churchill has carved several dugout canoes before, working with the traditional hand tools such as the adze. Uh, While well, this tree demanded use of the chainsaw, so uh, he used the uh, hand tools, I used the power tools, and then we roped in uh, friends and whoever else we could find to come uh, beat on the tree. Yeah. Well, uh... The uh, sawmill had marked the one side as the top, uh, while well, Churchill looked at it and decided that was probably going to be the bottom. And so that was really our first step, was to flatten out the bottom, while well, leaving the, uh, the two ends undisturbed there in case we changed our mind and decided to make that the top after all. Then it was time to turn it over and work on the other side. Go, 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 quick, quick, quick. Got it. Hold it for a second. Right. You might have to. Oh, yeah, you. Oh. Yeah, you're going to have to hold it. Hold that in there. All right, now. Just hold it. I got it. Ah, it gets easier <laughs> every time. Churchill marked out guidelines uh, along the top of the canoe, and then I took the chainsaw and dug in as deep as I could go to start hollowing out the middle. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> There's another one there, dude. Coming right up. <laughs> or that's going down, one or the other. The hardest part is getting that first wedge out. Once that's out of the way, the rest of it should theoretically come out a whole lot easier. Here it goes. It's going. I can do there, guys. <laughs> can hear it. It looks a little slow, but this is only day two of the project, so we're really off to a pretty good start. Ha <laughs> ha! The rough cut is done. Well, inside anyway. There you go, man. Ooh, that's a lot of canoe. With the inside of the canoe roughed out, it was time to rough out the outside of the canoe, starting by trimming the stern and bow line. up on the side. Balanced during a rough pointed already. This is a functional canoe already, folks. <laughs> Everything that we trimmed with the saw, we would uh, typically trim numerous times, uh, taking off a little bit at a time, being careful not to go too far. And even though we're just a few days with the project here, it would actually take us months to finish it, uh, being more and more careful as we got closer and closer to the end. <laughs> oh, she looks good. Biggest knot on the tree right here. Time to trim off the hood and tail 
that we previously left on as insurance in case we decided to make the bottom the top. And then it was time to attach the log wizard to the chainsaw to give us a more precise tool for flattening the bottom of the canoe. The log wizard is essentially a planer blade that's uh, run by the chain on the chainsaw. Uh, it is usually used for debarking the trees, but it works well for this project too. It, the wood is drying. I mean, I, that, that sap wood is super dry. At the end of work each day, uh, Churchill oiled all the knots on the tree to uh, prevent them from drying out and cracking. Yeah. Yeah, see, when they get the that going around them, I mean, that's, that's sap it looks like on this, mm. which, uh, which might not be bad. One of the reasons that the log has to be so big to make a dugout canoe is that all of this soft white sapwood should be removed to get down to the harder, nicer wood underneath to make a really classy canoe. And Churchill used the scarping tool to remove the sapwood while I continued to plane out the bottom with the log wizard. <laughs> All right, look at that. This canoe is already starting to show some nice curves. <laughs> we already cut the stern and bow lines once, now we're doing the cuts again as we get closer and closer to the final shape of the canoe. Oh yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Look at that! Woo! That's pretty. Yeah, she, uh, you'd be able to steer her right now, man. I'm telling you. Back on the tail end of the canoe, we had some work to do to uh, chop in and try to get to the bottom of a deep cut that I made back when we cut the first set of stern lines. That's what I do is go down the ridge and then, then go down one of the two that you create. Just keep doing it. Wherever we end up, that'll determine the final shape of the stern. While I continued chopping away at the stern, Churchill moved up and started shaping the sides and bow lines.
snug fir wood uh, dries and cracks very easily, which is pretty disconcerting when you're trying to build a canoe. Uh, we uh, oiled it liberally every day uh, after work, in this case using up some old secondhand uh, oil stain. She's still a heavy beast, but at this point light enough that just the two of us can roll her over. Hey, good, good, good. Okay. Let her go. She's sitting. Great. Good enough. While the outside of the canoe is starting to shape up pretty nicely, the inside of the canoe still has a long way to go. about a week into this project, and you gotta admit, it's really looking good. That deep chainsaw cut in the back went all the way through in one spot, which required some Gorilla Glue to seal it up on the outside, and we filled the entire crack with epoxy from the inside. We systematically reduced several thousand pounds of wood to wood chips and sawdust, which we then uh, raked and uh, sprinkled out into the grass, especially where the grass was thin, to uh, serve as mulch to hopefully hold in moisture and encourage the grass to grow stronger. I leveled and smoothed the inside of the canoe with the log river, uh, going back and forth, back and forth, and taking off about a quarter inch of material with each pass through the canoe. I switched back and forth between the log wizard and the ads, uh, using the ads to clean out the corners where the log wizard wouldn't go. The log wizard also came in handy to grind away at those big old knots on the outside. much better yeah yeah at this point we started uh, thinning out the walls from inside the canoe uh, being careful to leave uh, plenty of thickness at the top for the gunnels we uh, eagerly shared the project with uh, whoever came along including uh, some guys from a uh, local chapter of the American Mountain Men Churchill observed what uh, appeared to be a beaver face in the bow of the canoe with a knot uh, serving as an eye, and he started to work with that to sculpt it out to bring the beaver face uh, to life. I kept going uh, deeper and deeper with the log wizard, uh, back and forth, layer by layer, until I had turned six inches of wood to sawdust. 
Well, I did a lot of uh, grunt work to remove both material. Churchill brought the artistic skill and craftsmanship to sculpt the canoe so that it would be not just beautiful, but also highly functional on the water. And finally, it was time to move the canoe closer to the electricity to start doing some work with the grinder. Well, the canoe is really enjoying the moisture. The color is really popping this morning. You can see the pink color of the heartwood. All the yellowish stuff is uh, the sapwood. At this point in the process, it looks like we're down to the finishing details. Yet the reality is that the walls are still four to six inches thick and the head is a solid block of wood. We still have a lot of material to remove, but we're gonna go more slowly and take care that we don't take off too much. The chainsaw marks in the gunnels are left over from the beginning of the process when we blocked out the middle of the canoe. And now Churchill is digging into those, uh, seeing how far we need to trim back the gunnels in order to completely remove those lines. Well, I worked all day on one half of the bow, <laughs> uh, but we were getting her nice, man. I'm uh, starting to fix that nose. It's a little wacky. Uh, bring it down a little bit and do the final shape. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to bring this stuff in after I'm done over here. I'm probably going to bring this eye down and in a little bit, too to match this one. I think this one's a little bit farther in and certainly down a little bit. Okay, time for brain surgery here. We're going to hollow out the head and get rid of some of this extra weight. Well, we've used quite a few tools uh, getting up inside the uh, bow today. Tom did a great job getting up in there. And I've been waiting for this disc because this is a very special. Uh, it's made for a fillet weld uh, to smooth them out, the, the metal welds and corners of things. And uh, it's got a fully rounded blade, and that's what I need uh, to do the fancy stuff I want to do. And we also hollowed out a little pocket on the tail end to remove a few extra pounds there too. We're, we're getting the shape here on the stern. We are ab absolutely getting the shape all around. We got the seat shaping up and uh, we're getting a good scoop on this side and matching it pretty darn well. But uh, not a bad shape on the stern there. And she is pretty flat. We did leave her like this. But she's got pretty good lines, man. They're, they're pretty uh, symmetrical. A little point on the bow here. I kept working with the log wizard uh, trying to dig out those corners, which is a whole lot easier to do with the canoe tilted on one side. <laughs> Any handcrafted uh, boat needs a name, and this one is such a beauty that I named her Belladonna Beaver, and here we're cutting out a wedge to better define the tail. Is that pry bar out here? Been working on the port side all day. She's really cleaning up nice, uh, but if you'll notice, look at the wavy lines. That's the cracks uh, 
opening up as I'm working on it. She really liked the moisture from the last couple days, uh, the rain here and there, and uh, she tightened up quite a bit. I'm trying to get this side done. She's leaking pretty bad, mostly out the ends. This canoe is tough, man, let me tell you. I, the cracks are beyond me. I just, I decided to go ahead and oil this side. I decided to fill it with water to keep the bottom from cracking anymore. And uh, even though it's leaking out, it's gonna take quite a while. And uh, this hopefully will keep it from cracking anymore on the bottom. All right, this is a really big day. Tom's bringing down the gunnels. I asked him to go ahead and use the saw. And we're knocking them down, man. He's gonna lose some weight here. It's always scary pulling down the gunnels, uh, but it's one of the last things I do, and that's uh, there's a reason for it. <laughs> there's a couple of reasons for it, but, uh, but it's very important to get this right uh, and get her even on both sides. And uh, she's going to lose a lot of weight just losing a couple of inches, uh, you know, wide and a couple of inches down on each side here. She's going to lose quite a bit of weight. So. There she is. Bella the beaver, <laughs> Bella the dugout canoe, this is Tom's baby, and uh, I gotta say I'm pretty proud of this canoe. <laughs> it's going to be an interesting day. We've got uh, two months into this project so far, and uh, now that the mosquitoes are starting to hatch out, it is uh, time to load Bella up and take her up to the house where it's high and dry and there's no mosquitoes. got the inside of the starboard side done pretty much uh, we've got the transition smoothed out and then the bottom is flat as we're gonna pretty much uh, she's looking really good I'm so excited at long last we stuffed epoxy deep into all the cracks finished the finish coats and then took her out on the water Woo! <laughs> Be sure to watch my video, The Marias River Canoe Trip, to see her maiden voyage down the river. Yeah, I'd say 